Welcome back, RM family. We are here again with another episode. This time around, we got something special for everyone. We are doing a Valentine's Day special episode. Woo! Valentine's yeah. Day! Yeah! Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, for real. Let's see. We have the usual round of suspects. Well, I say that, but we're actually missing one today. Pen. He's uh, currently in Texas right now, so he can't record. But we do also have a special guest taking his place. As always, I am Mugen. I'm Brown Bear. I'm Birdman. And I'm Zero. And we have a special guest today. Say hi. Hi, I'm Mugen's wife. <laughs> Otherwise known as Melly. What up? Yeah, I'm glad you're here because now we have the female perspective when it comes to the Valentine's Day episode. Honestly, it, you couldn't have helped anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, let's get right into it. First topic of the day for our Valentine's Day episode. I actually wanted to go over everyone's favorite anime couple that they swear by. It could be from an old show that they watched a long time ago or just any kind of new uh, couple that you've recently developed feelings for. You just like the character interactions. However you want, we are going to go down the list. Now, does anyone volunteer to share theirs? I'll go ahead and kick us off, uh, Mugen. So, uh, the couple I decided to go with was uh, Naruto Hinata. So, th this is an interesting uh, pick for me because th this was a couple that had a lot of time to develop. Spoiler warning for the end of Shippuden if anyone hasn't seen it. Naruto and Hinata do eventually end up together. Um, they actually do explore their relationship in, in, in a movie. Um, I, I forgot the movie's really? title off the top of my head. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's Bonds, Naruto Shippen and Bonds, I believe. Yeah, is, is that yeah, the one where they is that the one where they go to the moon? <laughs> or am I tripping? Wait, what? That, I oh. I think that no. might be a different one. They have a lot that, that's a different one. That's the of, Boruto of, movie, I want to say. That it could be that one, yeah. <laughs> there there was a movie that that explored their relationship a little bit more and, and really how they they were a, a perfect fit for each other. Um, the, and it's symbolized with like this red ribbon that helps tie their face together, and, and that's a big symbol in, in, in the movie. It really hits home through. Uh, it, it really hit home for me because like it's it, it's talking about fate and how people are meant to be together and soulmates and stuff like that. And um, uh, coupling that with how they they've naturally progressed throughout the show, where the majority of the show um, they weren't together, or Naruto had other interests, whether that was his own uh, his own goals or other people. Um, it didn't really start to come together until we, we got to see that more in Shippuden um, when, when they started to really develop a, a bond for each other. Um, more specifically, uh, what where it really uh, took, a, took a leap was during that pain fight. Uh, if anybody remembers, mm. uh, oh, yeah. Naruto was, uh, you, know, uh, you know, beaten down, uh, was pinned down by, by pain, uh, and then Hinata steps in to fight for him because no one else was around to, to help, she jumps in knowing that she can't win. Obviously, if uh, Naruto uh, didn't have the power to, Hinata also knew she wouldn't, but she had to try. And that was the first step of Naruto actually noticing, oh, she actually cares about me. And, you know, she she actually says, I love you. And it's a really powerful moment in, in that specific moment because Pain immediately takes her down and it immediately takes Naruto into the next level of his power, which is out of control. But it does show that he has some kind of reciprocal feelings in that moment. And that only continues to, to develop from there. And for that and out, as it continues to develop, that's why it's my pick. Oh, fantastic explanation. <laughs> Yeah, for real. A lot of people wanted him to get rid, uh, get with Sakura for a moment, yeah. but I'm glad they went with the Hinata route, honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just worked better, in my opinion. <laughs> I think it was you know, Sakura with Sasuke. I don't know. You know. I, <laughs> That's a whole other thing. Yeah, yeah. like I said, let Sasuke. me not go down that hole. <laughs> right, another video. <laughs> Valentine's Day ruined. Right. <laughs> Anyone else want to go next? <laughs> Um, I guess I'll go ahead and go. My couple that uh, I ended up picking was uh, Kagome and Inuyasha. Um, mm -hmm. This couple kind of just stuck with me because, I mean, this, I say this all the time, but it's literally my, uh, the first anime that I paid attention to the actual plot and story. I, I was normally there for the fight scenes and such with things like Dragon Ball Z and Yu Yu Hakusho, but... Um, this hey, you York show had romance, <laughs> yeah. Oh, it, it did, true. yeah, it did. Um, but I, yeah, I was there for the 
Biden. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, Inuyasha, I don't know, just kind of caught me with the story. Um, and those two, I don't know, they, like, like you just, they just had all those kind of romantic moments where you knew they liked each other and then <laughs> something would happen and it's like uh, like oh my gosh like get together like already <laughs> it would literally uh just kill me because i wanted them to be together so stop bad. thinking about your dead ex-girlfriend <laughs> yeah it, yeah it, it's yeah it's like speaking of that like i'm like <laughs> the love triangle with Idiyasha, kikyo and kagome added to that stress of wanting them to be together and it's like i mean i felt bad like i felt bad for uh kikyo's position but i was like look you already dead stop clock blocking dude and let the dude go on man like damn you get it you're bitter you're a bitter dead soul I'm like every, every time he got ready to like move on with kagome it's like oh here come kikyo i was like fuck man like come on <laughs> I, was, nah, I was team Kagome. I mean, I guess it, 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 I was team Kagome, uh, but and I guess maybe some people out there team Kikyo. But I'm just like, man, come on, man. Uh, the thing about um, Inuyasha and Kagome, well, the story itself is the romance is is kind of front and center, or at least the with the character interactions, it's more about them, and you know, like they're they're just kind of mistrusting of each other at first you know they they had to work together and put aside their differences and through that you know they've learned to kind of care about each other over time but of course you know with the kikyo thing inuyasha and kikyo had such a strong bond then it was then it was uh taken away from them and and we get why there's like that bitter rivalry uh, or that bitter ex feeling that (laughs) that Kikyo had with Inuyasha, but that's I, I guess that's what made the the triangle interesting. And um, Rumiko Takahashi, the author, is, you know, a woman author, and she is no stranger to the romantic love triangle. She kind of made a living, and she was very famous for those stories well before Inuyasha, and she kind of continued that tried-and-true formula into Inuyasha, and it, and it worked pretty well. And I think, yeah, like you said, with it being kind of front and center, it in a way forced you to really pay attention to the plot. Like, you know, cause it, it definitely was, you know, story first, uh, fighting second. And <laughs> but it was a good moment when, you know, at the end of the final act, again, spoilers, um, <laughs> where they actually we'll spoil do, everything today. <laughs> yeah, they actually do get together and, you know, and also and um, obviously continuing that with the. Uh, Yashahime, yeah. Uh, Yashahime, yeah. Princess Half Demon. And then, um, you know, and they're kind of continuing that with the with their relationship there, too. So, mm-hmm. yeah, um, Team Kagome and uh, Kagome won. <laughs> Kagome took it. Yeah, good pick. Good classic. Early 2000s Adult Swim pick that still resonates with us today. <laughs> uh, Birdman, tell us about your OTP. All right. Um, well, mine is uh, nowhere near as like iconic or classic um, like Brown Bear and uh, Zero. Um, nah, I'm sure it's valid. I mean, valid to me, and that's all that matters. <laughs> but no, um, it's from a um, underrated anime that I enjoyed a lot. Um, like it came out 2019, I believe. It's called High Score Girl, and the couple is Haruo and Ono. Um, so this one, it's it's a, a netflix anime it's set in the 90s and it's like revolves around um like that 90s arcade video game culture it's kind of a i feel like it, it kind of ends up being like a, a romeo and juliet like spin so you've got haro who's i mean romeo and he's just kind of he's just kind of like a delinquent and you know just not good in school or anything like that and then you've got o- ono who comes from this super wealthy family um she is like super smart she's a musical genius and also a martial arts expert um and basically she kind of to escape that world will like sneak out and go to these arcades and play these games and the two kind of just end up having this bond through the through the video games like ono actually doesn't even speak that's that's one thing that's also interesting with her so non-verbal all of her um communicate communication is just done through gestures facial expressions and also because she is a martial arts expert by throwing hands so um 
I just like their their dynamic because they just get like they hate each other at first like they're rivals because of the video game so like they're just constantly competing um in all these games around around the whole city and in tournaments and stuff to you know be number one and then they kind of just slowly slowly get get like get to know each other and like start connecting to the point where they actually like communicate with each other through these video games like they're just doing movements and stuff in the video games and they're understanding what the other one is trying to say to, to the other and yeah i mean it just i just thought it was a very interesting spin on the rom-com kind of thing because you know you have it still has the typical you know will they or won't they kind of thing you have like love triangle stuff thrown in there and whatnot but just hmm. i just really really enjoy their dynamic yeah that's pretty neat at least just looking at me like we're just kind of looking at each other like the premise sort of reminds me of uh comey can't communicate it's like a netflix <laughs> yeah. show that's all yeah. right now yeah, that, that, yeah. So that's another one too yeah. yeah that's another good one honestly <laughs> good recommend for later anyway but um solid pick solid pick i mean <laughs> if anyone knows me they know I gotta go with my one OTP that's been with me for a long time. I could have gone with Guts and Casca from Berserk because I, I honestly really enjoy their their story. Also, um, Godai and Kyoko from Masonic Koku. But God, um, I had to go with my one true pairing, Sosuke and Konami from Full Metal Panic, because I think to this day that's why I've I've stayed with the franchise as much as I have. I've kind of explained the plot before in our newbies video. But, I mean, it's really just their character dynamics that makes it interesting for me. A lot of the school stuff is, like, just kind of wacky hijinks or <laughs> that man just uh, pulls Fumofu. out. Yeah, Fumofu. Yeah, exactly. And Fumofu as well. Where, you know, he just <laughs> uses his military expertise to take care of uh, mundane, ordinary situations where you don't need to pull a gun out or cause a, a shoe locker to explode. And then, you know, she's there to kind of get irritated at him, put him in his place. They're, they're kind of like a little comedy duo act. She's just always kind of frustrated, irritated with him. But, you know... I, um, of course, when you have the more serious plot lines and stuff, yeah, uh, that's that's when you get the 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 meat and the juice like of their relationship. You know, where they're able to see more eye to eye and even just develop feelings for each other. Um, God, like one of my favorite scenes from the second raid is just um, Sosuke having uh, having failed to get a haircut <laughs> because he's just so paranoid with someone with scissors. Konami decides to give him a haircut for him. And so it's like this extremely intimate scene where there's not a whole lot of background music. It's just it's just her giving him a haircut. And it's like one of the like my favorite moments in the show. Kyoto Animation does such a good job with it, too. It's like their bonding moment. The twist at the very end of the episode is where uh, Sosuke finds out he is no longer in charge of protecting her and he's to immediately move. And he doesn't take that well. He immediately snaps and just destroys his his laptop. And then that was the moment where he realized, you know, she is everything. So that was a pivotal moment for for that series. And it just develops over time. And, and even through, like, in the last season, Invisible Victory, where they're separated, Sosuke is doing everything. He's going full John Wick on everybody and just and just doing whatever it takes to get her back, even on even with even with no backup or or you know his organization's destroyed, the bad guys win, but he's still determined to get her back. And so that's basically where that anime leaves off. And will there be more? Who knows? But I've read the rest of the story because damn it, I needed to see how my OTP finishes this out, and you know it's very satisfying to me. You were gonna pick that. Yeah, but that's a solid <laughs> pick, though. I agree. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yep. Yeah. You know, people who know me, I guess, knew I was going to pick that. Like I said, it was it was back and forth between a few of them, but honestly, like I just had to go with it, and it's been with me for a long time. It's kind of the driving force of why I got into the series, and you know, despite all the mech action and and everything about it, it's really just the story about those two. And you know, there's a few like kind of love triangle situations in between but ultimately it's it's really about them yeah and i just remember watching that haircut scene that that scene was really impactful like that was very it was really impactful for really no lines no like barely like no music it, it was yeah they're just they're just you know like just kind of sharing a moment with each other and yeah and then all of a sudden oh you're no longer assigned to her <laughs> yeah. and it, 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 it like it it tears them apart. Yep, you out. You out. 
I was wrestling mm-hmm. with with mine uh, for a little while. I want to give an honorable mention to a uh, uh, fr- uh, fruits basket uh, without going too far into it. It's hard to discuss the couple and how they develop without giving away literally the entire plot of the story because it's that's the story. I mean, we've been spoiling everything here. So, <laughs> so that <laughs> you're like, hold up, I'm, I'm still watching. You're that. watching the new version, you're right? Like, right. <laughs> Oh, but, brief synopsis, if you can. Really, it's just a quick shout out to, to Kyo and Toru. That's uh, that's really yep. all I can say is the two two very uh, uh, oblivious characters to each other, um, <laughs> eventually finding their way to each other, and it's it, it's very natural and it, it aids to the story in so many ways. And oh, that's I all I can. Look forward to that one. I can <laughs> see it. I'm like on season two, and I'm seeing it, and I'm just like, come on. I know. I, I personally, I, I'm there with you. I'm in the middle of season two as well, um, but uh, I, I, I do have some plot points that that point to them getting together, and it's uh, it, it ends up it ends up it's a good payoff. Um, but like I said, without giving away the rest of the story, um, just watch it for yourself. You can see it. <laughs> yeah, I'd also like to give an honorable mention to. Uh, like Yagami and uh, Misa Misa. Everybody no. wants to be uh, manipulated <laughs> no. in a relationship. And, I mean, uh, it's a solid relationship. <laughs> it's one way, but it is a solid relationship. I scratch your back, That's you right. scratch mine. Help me kill all the police. It's a very business type of relationship. It's very business. <laughs> <laughs> and they get stuff done together. They get yeah. stuff done. Hey, they get stuff done. You will done. say they they are they are a power couple. <laughs> they, God. Definitely. They, they, they're a like force. You're not messing with sure. them though. <laughs> you're not yeah. Them. You will not break them apart. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned Comey. That's a good one. But she uh, can't Comey? communicate. But she can't communicate. No, that's exactly the thing. Like, okay, we're all like weeds, right? There's people out there that have a hard time talking to the general public, general definitely. people, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes, she's yeah. beautiful. Everyone thinks highly of her, but she can't communicate, so it stresses her out. She's got social anxiety, <laughs> and then just your basic guy shows up and's like, "Here, I can help you." Yeah. And Let's then... find you a hundred friends. <laughs> 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 but you can see, like, she likes him, and you're like, "Yes, go, go," and it's just like, "Oh, come on." <laughs> <laughs> but that, I guess, that would be your couple by default. You're at least your current couple right now. My current couple. Yeah, sure. <laughs> there we go. But yeah, uh, good recommend. Good stuff, everybody. Anyways, mm-hmm. let's let's move on. It is time to rate your waifu. Get to the good <laughs> stuff. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, we just we decided. Oh, you know what? Let's let's pick a few waifus, and and you know what? Maybe even a husbando. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know. Uh, I have a few picks, honestly. If you go to the Valentine's special tab, I put some images there. My first pick is Ayukawa Madoka, who I tend to call 80s Bay. She is, um, she's comes off as a delinquent, and she's like, she's kind of an outcast from everyone, and oh, you know what? It kind of reminds me of Komi a little bit, where, you know, it takes that, that one kind of nice person to open up to her, and and kind of, you know, get her to start changing her ways a little bit, you know, like she's, and before she goes down the wrong path, but she's kind of like, she's kind of like the master of all trades in a way. She's just good at doing the saxophone. She's just a natural athlete. She's just, uh, she's badass. She can fight. <laughs> you know, she, she can, um, it, it's, I don't know. She's kind of been like the eighties icon of anime waifus for a long time. And that's why she is my number one pick. I kind of move on to the next decade with uh, the next pick, Ryoko from Tenshi. <laughs> much like uh, Ayakawa, she's very much a badass. She's a space pirate, if you want, if I want to put it in context. Um, one of the first of Tenshi's harem of, of ladies. Really, there's only just two that really are after him, Ryoko and Aika. But Ryoko here, she's feisty, she's brash. She loves to have a good time. She's kind of lazy, just <laughs> doesn't like doing her chores. She'd rather just drink sake and just, you know. And that's a waifu. And that's a waifu because she's just awesome and badass. And I mean, she's down bad for Tenshi, so she's always trying to get him in the sack. She, so. she, she embodies the id, like she is id incarnate. From- <laughs> she really is. <laughs> <laughs> she really is. And, and of course, shout out to... Uh, the old tsunami days where 
like you know a lot of a lot of 90s kids uh, really fell in love with her uh, they wouldn't show that show on tsunami hadn't had it not been for a lot of the uh, censorship that they put on i.e the bass scene with digital bikinis that's hilarious to me <laughs> but i mean without those edits we wouldn't be able to see uh ryoko in a lot of her glory you know she's she's awesome she's a badass and and uh, that's why she's number two on my list. And we have a very recent pick with this one, Marin Kitagawa. And she is, I, I've only seen one episode of this, to be fair. <laughs> but she is taking over 2022's like waifu of the year. And I can see why. I believe in the um, Marin supremacy because she is just everywhere. But watching that episode, she is very eccentric. Well, I wouldn't say eccentric, but she's very flashy. She wears a lot of like nice makeup and stuff, and she doesn't mind telling people how it is. She's at least a good person where she doesn't believe in making fun of people's um, interests. Yeah, interests. Like the first, like the main character dude is like a meek person who, who loves to craft dolls, and, and because of that, he he doesn't really have, I guess, a lot of friends, and the one he's traumatized by uh, a little girl who made fun of his um, his interests a long time ago. So she comes along and basically discovers his interests when he was uh, sewing the clothes for a doll, and then she found it fascinating because he can actually sew, and she's a cosplayer. She basically needs someone, uh, someone who can help her. I guess achieve her dreams as a cosplayer, someone who can sew, and so you know she she finds this guy and. You know, I'm sure romantic relations will ensue. There's a bond. There is an instant bond. Oh, and there's plenty of, like, fan service for that show. <laughs> in that show. They do not hide it. But yeah, that, those were my three picks. Zero, how about you tell us yours? I did not uh, put mine in any particular order. Um, but uh, first would definitely be Bulma. Classic. Because uh, she just straight, uh, straight sugar mama. Um, <laughs> Hell yeah! I'm not working another day in my life. And, uh, she is brains and beauty. She yeah, kind of is the whole package in terms of what she. <laughs> yeah, she yeah, she's yeah. not afraid to use her assets to get what she wants. A hundred percent in hilarious ways. A hundred percent. Like I like I, like like yeah. I mean, you just you can't you, you can't beat that. You know, do whatever you want to do. You know, Vegeta chose to train. Uh, I'll probably be uh, <laughs> drinking rosé on a yacht. <laughs> she knows how to live <laughs> well when you're the world's richest woman and like uh, as smart as she is you can just kind of do whatever you want and that's why all the all these deities and aliens and stuff like <laughs> Bulma is the reason why they don't destroy the earth because she's so hospitable so yeah thank you Bulma <laughs> would it be fair to say she's a genius billionaire philanthropist <laughs> Uh, very fair. Yeah. <laughs> that is Bulma. <laughs> Someone make that meme if they haven't already. My next one um, from my actual couples pick, um, I'm going with uh, Kagome. Really, if I get, if I had to pick uh, if I had to pick one, like my number one, it probably would have actually been Kagome. Um, I mean, who else you know gonna leave the whole time period, like the whole time period for your ass? Like, seriously, she gave up <laughs> cell phones, she gave up cars, she gave up AC, she gave, she gave up, up plumbing. Yeah, plumbing. <laughs> she gave up everything plumbing. to to be yeah. with Inuyasha, bro. Nah, like that, like, that is S tier, S tier, like, love and dedication. Like, I, that, like, that, like, that's just number one. Like, like, she's number one. I'm like, I'm talking myself into it right now. She's number one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel you. She is number one. And my last one um, is Tsunade. And um, honestly, I just had the biggest crush on Tsunade back in the day. <laughs> um, Heck yeah. And, um, th and it, it just kind of stuck with me. And uh, really, I mean, there was two big reasons <laughs> That, yeah, two uh, very very reasons. big reasons her great personality yeah, and her chakra right yeah and and it chakra. was yeah her, her great personality <laughs> and her chakra exactly um yeah 15 yeah 15 year old me uh yeah so we're gonna leave that one there so it's not <laughs> nasty <laughs> <laughs> those are my picks hey man what you got 
All right, so I don't have three. I just got two. I'm gonna keep this uh, short and sweet here. So um, no particular order. We're just gonna start off with uh, Sasha from Attack on Titan. Um, just because who doesn't love Potato Girl? Like, yeah, I don't know. Like, <laughs> she's just, like, she is a fan favorite. They have like giant Titans running around eating people, and she's just kind of you know just having fun, just chilling, eating potatoes. And, you know, she seems like the only person having fun out there. So you know. <laughs> in a world of Attack on Titan, you gotta, it's the little things that you gotta exactly. do exactly. to keep yourself yeah. sane. And, uh, fuck Abby. Fun. <laughs> yeah. Don't even, don't even, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Don't even give me sorry. Gabby, Gabby something else. Piss me off. Because uh, Jim Carrey <laughs> said that one time, if you're not having fun, then what's the point? <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to the top. All right, um, so yeah, Sasha, uh, and then, um, <clears throat> the other one, uh, I'm going to go with Ursa Scarlet from Fairy Tale. Yeah. Right, That's so, I approve. <laughs> number one, she's badass. She has like Hell yeah. thousands, oh, yep. that, upon thousands of like magical suits of armor and she will beat your ass. Like, and I need that in my life. I need somebody who would just throw hands for me. <laughs> uh, number two, she's also, underneath all the badassery, a very like loyal and caring person. Like, She just cares about her friends, family, all that stuff. Like, She's very, very loyal like family centric kind of person and finally i am i guess what you'd call an introvert like i'm, I'm kind of a shy person and honestly i just need somebody who so if i go out to get some food right and i get back and, and it's wrong i need somebody who's gonna stand up for me and take it back and go fight the people at the, at the, at the drive-thru and i feel like she would do she that she will bust out that oh, sword yeah, she and be like quick. I just be kind of like <laughs> I just kind of accept down. it I'm just kind of like well this is my life now you know I wanted a burger but they gave me nuggets like, <laughs> it is what it is but is it gonna get in the car yeah. oh hell no and whoop the ass and I need that in my life I feel like everybody needs that in their life the kind of wife who if you rear in somebody and then the, the big guy comes out of the car she gets out of the car with you yep Oh, she's going to get out first. She's going to be out That's first. what I was going to say. She's going to beat you <laughs> to the deck, that place. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm down with that. <laughs> Top tier wifey right there. Yeah. Brown Bear, why don't you uh, uh, lead us off with yours? Yeah, so uh, also uh, I think mine are in pretty set order here. But um, the, starting off my number three pick is Botan from Yu Show. So... But the reason why Botan stands out to me more than Keiko, well, Keiko and Yusuke are, are a fine relationship as it is. Botan offers a little bit more personality and a little bit more to, to, to the plot. She actually has powers that can help contribute to whatever they're doing. She helped Yusuke become a spirit detective. She help, helps guide him through several of his missions. She has several key abilities that are relevant to whatever they're doing. Uh, so even several times, she's even gotten into the fight herself when trying to protect Keiko or trying to get something done. You know, being the correspondent to um, to Koenma, uh, she she really is a go getter. She she's out there helping the team in, in in her own different way. I also really like how they presented her as, as a as a joyful and jolly character, as she is the embodiment of death. <laughs> Oftentimes, in a lot of different media, you see death portrayed as like this dark, grim character, being a grim reaper. She is the Grim Reaper, but she's also like a fun Grim Reaper. It's supposed to be fun in Spirit World, how, how we do this. I, I do like how you Hakusho flipped on its head. Even Yusuke was like, isn't Grim Reaper supposed to be like, you know, Grim? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that is my number three. Uh, moving on to number two is Yoroichi from Bleach. Now, hey. talk about someone who isn't afraid to not, not only guide the main character it's similar to how Botan did but also she isn't afraid to get in the fray with him however she can she taught Ichigo several abilities that that he still currently uses he uh she uh helped him d develop his bankai in a certain way she and she's just a, a natural good fighter as well she has a lot of depth to her character now initially you don't really see that because she's disguised as a cat and they they play on that in, in a couple of ways but um really just a, a lot of her character develops as the show goes on she has a history with with, with the um oh gosh the soul society and she has her own reasons for doing what she's doing she's more of a rogue character and her and she she prioritizes speed and there's there's a lot um that can be said about uh, about a character like that um she has a lot of layers to it and it really makes me appreciate her more as a character as well and, and as a teacher yeah that would be uh my number Solid. two uh and then uh, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't do this for number one, but it, it's got to be Hinata from Naruto for my number one. Um, 
like I was explaining earlier, the, the the development of their relationship is, especially in Dishipudin, is so good. Um, the 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 movie really does help develop their the relationship, and um, e- even more so, like we were talking about how like Sakura has her own thing, but you really do realize towards the end of the show, it, it, it's gotta be Hinata. She, she contributes so much to the team. She is a shy... It, 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 they do flip it a little bit where you have the shy girl. I mean, of course, that's been changed a little bit lately as, you know, we have like characters like Komi and I'm, I'm sure they... I think uh, you even said it yourself, uh, Bird, that the uh, high, high school girl is also a shy character. And I, I they've been doing that more. I feel like Hinata was, was one, of the, one of the few at its time to really push that forward and you had a strong uh, protagonist who also had like like a shy girl who also idolized which changed into something else uh, later on so for that it's my number one pick very nice very nice and I'll just add on to that yeah I think like for Hinata like like you really did think that you know it was gonna be Sakura and I would say when you look at some of the, the uh, some of the girls on this list like some of the like a lot of them are like pretty headstrong you know very headstrong girls and they you know they 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 have their own personalities and then you kind of have Hinata who is kind of the quiet you know kind of the quiet girl um who you could see had a crush on Naruto but um you're like uh oh, no it's probably gonna be Sakura because again she kind of follows that mold of you know like she you know she's her own like you know she's her she's her personality's loud and you know she, she always <laughs> beating up naruto or you know um just kind of reminds me of sit boy or from inuyasha or <laughs> yeah. um, even uh kaname hitting um so yeah, true. there's a lot of you a know. lot of brash, uh, like loud girls that we <laughs> that we pick. Um, <laughs> Not a thing about it, but uh, yeah, like she's the one, she's kind of the one that you know, like that. And I like how you talked about that scene because that scene was so powerful in the show. And it's like, and then to see how it, you know, it ended, and she, you know, she, get, you know, she got the guy. It's like it, it was, uh, it, it really made me appreciate her uh, more as a character. And I'm happy that they wrote it the way that they did. The shy girl wins this one. <laughs> More power to them. Really, do you have any husbandos you want to talk about? Okay, well, I mean, you brought up Botan. Um, I'm loyal to Hiei. Hey. <laughs> I know I know Karama's the looks and he's he'll treat you right, but, <laughs> but Hiei, <laughs> I suck with. I mean, he, he comes off as a badass, but you know he has a sweet side because he cares for his sister. And then he does kind of like develop a friendship with all the other guys. Yeah. Yeah, the short king. The short king. <laughs> Hell yeah. Do it for the short right. people. Hey, hey right? <laughs> You're totally right about the, uh, you know, caring for his sister part. That's like, that's like, he puts on a tough front, but he does have a soft side to him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when he's not trying to murder everyone else. <laughs> and then, he's still young, but when he gets older, I would pick Tanjiro from Demon Slayer. I mean, I think it's obvious why he would be husbando material. I mean, he's already he's already got everything as a kid, so yeah, he'll grow up into those features. Yeah, he does a lot of cooking and cleaning and all that. Right, and he does all the chores, <laughs> and, <laughs> and he can fight. He can defend you. Yeah, and he's he, very sweet. Yeah, extremely loyal. Doesn't have a bad bone in him, huh? Nope. <laughs> yeah, he would, he'll, he'll carry you on his back. He will yeah, carry literally. you on his back for sure. <laughs> Quite literally. You'll be in a relationship and then you're going to question, what's bad? What's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> what was it in What the- are your faults? You need to have faults. <laughs> <laughs> what was that space in um, um, you can train? Like his soul? Um, what was it? Like his soul space or his heart? Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's, like, it's like pure and glowing. It was, it was like it was so like, pure. Yeah, it's like the like purest thing bro. ever. You, you made a man who was vengeful and like sick with tuberculosis just question why he was doing these things. It's like, how can I do it to this man? Like, he's so good. His like, souls are leading, his little helpers are leading me to his soul. Do you know I'm going to stab this thing? <laughs> right. Oh, man. Yeah, when he grows up, he'll be, be very good as Bondo, huh? Mm-hmm. Those are your picks? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good, solid picks. Before we go, does anyone have like kind of like any on-the-spot recommendations, like whether it be a show or a movie or anything like that? 
Oh. Yeah, someone needs to watch your name. I was gonna say. Yeah, oh yeah, my you goodness, watched, your name. Your name. Um, okay, Melly. <laughs> I mean, as soon as I heard it, I'm like, what? Yeah, I think it's... Zero, ha Zero has not seen your name, and it, it quite upset Melly. Get on I will go to Zero's house and drop off my Blu-ray copy <laughs> so he can watch it. <laughs> watch it with your wife. It'll be a good Valentine's Day treat. This is a legitimate him. offer. Like, I will go to your house and do this. <laughs> <laughs> Stop the recording. I... We're going to do this. I guess I have to now. It's on streaming services. You can watch it. Tonight. Yeah, the streaming services. Your name, one of the one of the highest profile anime movies of, uh, well, really of all time, but you know, definitely of 2016. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also watch your yeah. your lie in April if you haven't watched that. Ooh. Um, I, I still I still <laughs> need to watch oh, that. The feels. Watch it. The feels. The feels. Watch it. Oh, yeah. I, definitely. I, a nice feel good one is my love story that. that that that's mm. also good. Just that the, couple in general is really good. Yeah. But just, if you just want to feel good about everything, My Love Story is a really solid pick for Valentine's Day. Yeah, I I, I agree. I had I have yet to see it. I I've, you, I've seen it. Yeah. It's a very sweet dynamic. It is. Yeah. I'm, I like the subversion of like the guy is you know he's kind of a big hulking guy and you know he's like I'm never gonna get in a relationship but I mean look he's a big know, dumb. He found a sweet girl yeah he's a big yeah he's a soft bear he's a big soft bear <laughs> yeah brown brown bear approved <laughs> brown bear <laughs> approves of this yeah I agree uh, yeah, I gotta have like a I kind of have a oh go ahead go ahead zero go right ahead oh yeah I was just gonna um, say I'd recommend uh, Maisani Koku. Um, it's Funny, definitely, that was my recommend. Um, it was, it, it, yeah, I was gonna say, we actually ended up watching that one together, but um, yeah, well, back, um, but yeah, it's, it's an oldie, um, but it's fun and um, definitely a good feel good story. If you like Inuyasha and you want, you want kind of like that, but with more grounded characters, a little more adult and less superpowers, but still the kind of the wacky hijinks, uh, watch that, watch me, Sonic Goku. It's, it's kind of, um, uh, what would you call it? A time capsule of the 80s as well. It's definitely a product of its time. It's hard to find. It is, at this moment, it's not, not really released anywhere yet. But, and it's kind of a slow burn. Like, 96 episodes, whoo, kind of a lot. But you know what? It is definitely worth it. Like, it, like the characters are relatable. You root, for, you root for the main character who's just, like, trying to get with his apartment manager. Like, um, but you find out she's a widow and her heart was still attached to her ex-husband so it makes it it makes things very hard but you got your typical takahashi love triangle in there and all that and he's just really unlucky oh it's super unlucky you know what his <laughs> biggest gripe is capitalism he's just poor <laughs> and that is extremely relatable like rereading the manga i'm like oh this this man you know he's not that bad you know like you've had a lot worse bland protagonists but he's just poor and it's just unlucky and you know, a lot of situations could be solved with a cell phone. You know, that's why it's kind of a, <laughs> it's a product of its time. But you know what? It's it's oldie but goodie, and I definitely recommend it too. And with that, that'll wrap up today's and episode. No, 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 no. We have other recommendations. Oh yeah. How could I forget? Sorry. <laughs> oh, I have, I have, well, I have two. But <laughs> <laughs> go for it. I guess the one is the main one is. The Wotakoi. Wotakoi. Oh, I'm so sorry. That was my main one too. Like, uh, work, office workers bonding and enjoying each other's. It's like us, the weebs that grow up into adulthood. We have to work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're still weebs. We're still weebs. You still play games. You know, you still hang out with each other. And there's still romance. Is that yeah, the? Is that? That's the one where the 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 girl is doing an office job at, by day, but then she's like super otaku at night or something. In a way, but I, I, I think she she wanted to hide it at first, but then her coworker just totally called out her weakness and she freaked out. And then like the the main love interest is also kind of like a gamer dude, so he's just kind of chill with it. Nice. Yeah, and they they didn't really like click at first, but then they just kind of became in a relationship, kind of like real life. Mm -hmm. And they're just like, hey, want to go out? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So good recommend. Oh, don't you have one more? I mean, this one's more of a personal interest. Do it. Um, I like Monthly Girls Nozaki Kun. Hey. A rom com. Um, this girl, she she likes this guy. He comes off a little, uh, I guess, brutish maybe. Um, people would 
primarily see him as the guy that you'd see in fights rather than a nice, sweet guy that he is. <laughs> but the funny part is that he he makes shoujo manga. He's actually quite famous, right? He's a famous author? Yeah, well, he's a shoujo author that everyone assumes is a girl because it's shoujo, <laughs> right? But he writes all this stuff about romance, and then he's oblivious to the romance around right him. him. Right in front of him. <laughs> This girl just pretty much confesses to him, and he's like, oh, you want an autograph? And she's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's quite funny. I've seen pieces of it. it. It's hilarious. I love the opening song. Yes. <laughs> Good. It recommends. Hold on. I think Penn has something to say. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I, if I will say, uh, he, he did have a pick in the Discord that I can briefly mention. He mentioned When We Rock Bell from Formula Alchemist and Makoto from Persona 5. We'll give them a we'll give them a highlight right here. Too bad he couldn't join us, so he could uh, talk about them. But you know, yeah. it's solid picks, <laughs> solid solid picks. Well then, I think that just about wraps up this special edition Valentine's Day episode. Yes, sir. Yeah, oh, we did it, y'all. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thanks uh, for joining us as well, Millie. It was nice to have a special guest on here for the first time. A woman. Yeah, a, a woman, female. a female. Yeah. We needed a lady. We needed a good Girl? female perspective for the, what? What is a woman? What? <laughs> but yes, yes, we we appreciate your services for this episode. Thanks so much, y'all. It was a pleasure. And this is R and M signing out.